Can you switch to the Mac now? Yeah. And I need the mouse, I think. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Bukeri, and the name of my thesis project is Visual Music of the Heart, an art installation with scientific aspirations. It is an installation which uh, generates images and sounds in response to the viewer's heartbeat. The intention is to create an aesthetic experience which also has therapeutic benefit. And uh, this is based in the belief that specific musical knowledge can enrich and clarify our understanding of physical processes and also our ability to visualize information organically. So um, I've taken inspiration from two main areas which are the somewhat obscure genre of visual music as exemplified by the work of John Whitney and uh, the therapeutic work of Divyang Vakil and Milford Graves, both musicians. So um, visual music is an art form in which the relationship between sound and image is the aesthetic focus. And John Whitney was one of the first artists to use computer graphics in this uh, field. And he was also unique in that he sought to create, um, he sought to create a visual analog to music, which he termed fluid architecture. And this was somewhat unique in that, um, from his colleagues in that they usually sought to, to link parameters of sound, such as um, pitch, dynamics, and timbre, with parameters of image, such as color, form, and motion. Um, so this is a clip of Whitney explaining an idea which has been instrumental in the creation of this project. Here is an idea which I think is just fundamental to the organization of any pattern event in time. It is a discovery of a primary principle. At least it has become the foundation of all my work in recent years. These 24 hexagons will move in a circle obeying a simple program rule. The rule will make each hexagon move exactly one unit faster than its next smaller neighbor. So hex number two moves one unit faster than one. Number three, one unit faster than number two four faster than three and so on. Thus hex number 24 will move 24 times faster than number one. The rule of harmonic procession would be an appropriate name for this rule as you will see. Watch the white dot. It will serve as a clock to time the events as they happen. When the clock reaches one quarter around the full circle, our 24 hexes divide into four equal groups. Now they continue around by the procession rule till the white dot reaches one third. The 24 hexes now form three groups. On to the halfway point. Watch the clock. You can expect they will divide into two groups. Already a significant observation can be made. You can expect an event to happen. We have set an harmonic process in motion, and as it works itself out, we can predict the outcome. We have created expectations, and there is some pleasure to be had when expectations are satisfied. Watch the remaining fractional groups occur. You would count the next third, and the fourth, the last fifth, the sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. You can count them or not. This is the simplest way I've found to show idea become feeling. You don't need to count the hexagon groups to experience a kind of anticipation, a joy of recognition, to feel something vicariously akin to arrival home when this happens. So um, the main thing that interests me here is that um, divisions of time have a specific relationship to divisions of space or visual pattern. Um, for the past couple of years, I've been studying the Indian drum called the tabla. My teacher's name is Divyang Vakil, and he's a well-known musician in India, and he's just starting some schools here in America. Uh, the rhythmic structure of Indian music is based on specific length rhythmic cycles, such as 16-beat, 10-beat, 12-beat, 7-beat, etc. 
And each of these cycles has uh, specific emotional meanings, such as romance, aggression, serenity, or playfulness. And um, it is these emotional meanings that I hope to connect with Whitney's idea of harmonic procession, the numbered cycles. Um, excuse me, Milford Graves is um, a free jazz drummer, acupuncturist, and herbalist who's devoted his life to studying the um, unexpectedly rich rhythms of the human heart. And um, he's augmented stethoscopes and incorporated the nervous system firings, which cause our heart to beat into his uh, recordings. And he's found that um, a healthy heart has a particular musical quality. So here's a clip of him um, explaining that. There's a light in comes at night. That's tight, it's very tight. I said, you don't want that, you want some compliance, you see. So if I hear heartbeat like, 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 I make one. So it's this more musical quality. Um, which I both hope to portray and induce with my installation. So now I'm just going to give a little demo of what I have so far. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this, um, basically this, this system for creating the visuals is based on Whitney's idea, of what he calls differential dynamics which is this, what he was saying is where elements move at speeds which are proportional to each other. And um, so this is something where I can also kind of switch to different kind of patterned. So that you can see is sort of a seven pronged figure. Here's an eight six and five. So th these are the um, things which possibly um, in, related, in relation to the speeds of our heart could indicate something about our personalities or some particular state of our body. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just show you sort of a range of heart rates and how it would affect this uh, so, as you can see, there's um, two main colors. One color is, and it, the color is mapped to uh, the heart rate. So, hotter colors, red, redder colors, are related to higher heart rates. And Cooler colors, such as purple and blue, are related to slower heart rates. And the two colors are, one is the heart rate at the specific moment that it's being read, and another is sort of sometime later. So what that indicates is something which in biofeedback is called um, heart rate variability. And this is a, a measure which is said to, to show the health of, of your heart in a certain sense because um, when we breathe more fully, when we inhale, our heart speeds up. And when we exhale, our heart slows down. So if your heart rate is changing a lot, it means that you're, you're breathing more fully. So um, that's just an indicator I tried to build into this installation. So now, I like to just have any volunteer Perhaps Tali. <laughs> so one thing I would have done differently is um, right now I have a stethoscope which has a uh, a mic hooked up into it. So I have a mic hooked into the stethoscope. And then I'm in max MSP, I'm reading the, uh, I'm detecting sort of peak amplitudes to, to measure the heart. 
and it really is not very dependable. So it would have been better if I had used um, some exercise equipment where I'd be just getting sort of voltages for the, the, the heart rate and not using the actual sound that's picked up from the, from the stethoscope. The other thing is, because it's not reading um, exactly uh, correctly, the, the mechanism for creating those different patterns, such as a 5 or a 7 or an 8, doesn't really kick in. So that's sort of a, a, another problem. Um, if anyone else wants to try it, we can do that, or we can, we can move on. What do you try? What's that? Oh. too low. <laughs> okay. You get the point. Um, can you switch to the Mac? So uh, the next steps with this project are to go back and continue research. I found that um, this, this project in particular is, is, uh, seems to be a nexus for a wide range of subjects. Um, I was reading books by musicians, philosophers, psychologists, linguists, computer scientists, graphic designers, and the list goes on. So there's a lot that could really still affect this installation. and. Um, a lot that I would want to do. Um, the, the next thing would be to, uh, I think that therapeutic success will really depend on integrating experiential musical knowledge into this. So it means that I have to go back and practice my instruments, which are tabla and piano. And um, I think it's one thing to have an idea that, um, an idea which about musical and physical processes, and another to have an idea which, as Whitney says, um, becomes feeling. Uh, the next thing would be to um, change things as people experience the installation more and more, and I get their feedback. And um, I really hope that this is a project can, that can affect people's health for the better in the future. Thanks for your attention. Say again? Have you ever talked to Western medicine doctors about their incorporating this in their Um, I haven't. But I've sort of, I've looked into this field of uh, biofeedback. So um, that's part of what I want to go back and look into, because there's, there's really tons that's, that's been researched and written about this. So I kind of felt like I was just, treading a path that was already been tread quite a bit, but I just sort of had to do it. And um, there's probably a lot that I had to discover on my own that had already been discovered, you know, so. How did you continue? Um, well, I think really the biggest, I mean, I really feel strongly about this idea of financial musical knowledge. So I think um, that there's a, there's a, there's a knowledge you can have when you feel music or when you feel a rhythm in your body. And I think if that is not, if that's not integrated into this, it really is not going to have any weight. It's just going to be something that looks kind of pretty. So. It's funny, one thing I get worried about is the idea of, of switching to a non-acoustic uh, system, and it's throwing, throwing an electrode on someone's finger, getting the, the, the change in, in voltage compared with actually listening to 
a heart. I mean, I wonder what you know someone like Bachel would say about you know losing. You know what I mean? Losing the sound of the, the whole functioning heart and, to, and sacrificing that for for a pulse. You know, yeah. you might lose a lot of information that way. Yeah. Well, I think there's um, there's different parameters that that are informative. So there is just the basic pulse, and then there is also sort of the timbral qualities of one's body, <coughs> which I really wasn't um, incorporating into this. Yeah. The long term. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's really something that uh, Milford Graves emphasizes, that just listening to the actual sound of the heart um, has a lot of weight and, and meaning. I, I, I think we've all been in hospitals and we've seen people, and they're, they're in the bed and you see the heart rate monitor as it's going across. And this just seems to me like um, um, it might be a much better way to monitor the heartbeat. It's a lot less dubious. You sit there and you look at the monitor and you just hope that it stays at that rate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Echo, um, Echo uh, uh, I don't know if that stuff's cheap or not, it's probably not. But, you know, echocardiogram equipment, you know, basically sonogram equipment, mm -hmm. you know, can work well to find, you know, you can get a lot more sound out of one of those than out of the stethoscope. Yeah. Tom? Uh, you and I have talked about some of this before, and I definitely think one of the people worth looking out for you is this kid Vitalik who graduated a couple of years ago, and is a Western doctor who's very interested in um, biofeedback projects, and this is just very similar. Uh, but the question I have for you was, did you do any um, observation of how different environments affected it? I mean, for example, with people in a nice, calm, quiet room versus in a loud environment, this kind of um, I didn't do that because actually most of the term I spent um, just sort of technically constructing this max patch. And so it was sort of really only in the last couple weeks that I started to be able to s see what happens when people hook themselves up to it. So that's, I mean, that's another thing that's really that I want to do. And, and actu actually I'm kind of excited about it for the show because there's going to be tons of people coming in here and I, I can really get a sense of really a sense of power noise in the environment. <laughs> <laughs> right. right.